So we've got a whole load of plumbing bits because this time we're actually going to be hooking up the cold water system and having running water in the van, which would be very cool. So we spent a while thinking about all the different options you can have for water in the van and what we wanted because we're going to be living in this full time for a while and uh, we've got a shower and also the sink and stuff like that so we wanted it to be just really nice and simple just literally turn on a tap turn on the shower and it just works um, so for that we've got uh, basically a few different bits of kit and abby has drawn a really nice diagram as usual <laughs> and actually it's quite a simple setup really, the cold water supply. Pretty much starts here at the 85 litre water tank. So that is this one here, which is quite a nice big tank. And that will get filled up with nice fresh water through this big tube here. So that's the water inlet. Um, and we just fill that up with the hose. And then there's a breather tube, just so that as you're filling this water, the displaced air can go somewhere, which is quite important for when you're filling and also draining water out of the tank. Um, then there's a little drain tap on the bottom of the tank there. And that's this one. And all that's for is, probably won't use that very much, but that's if we ever wanted to drain the tank down. Um, maybe if we're going to be storing it for a while, we can take all the water out so it's not going to freeze in winter or something like that if we weren't using it. That will then go through a little shut-off valve. Um, and those just look like this, and just allow you to turn off and isolate the supply. It will then go through a little filter, which just stops any debris and stuff getting into the pump, which is next. Uh, and then the pump pushes it through uh, an accumulator, so this is the accumulator here, and all that really is, is they call it an expansion vessel as well. So it's half filled with air and half filled with water, and it's basically like kind of like a mini tank, a mini pressurized tank. Um, and what that does is it means that if you turn off the, uh, if you turn on a tap, you won't have to turn on the pump straight away. A little bit of pressure will be able to come from the accumulator, uh, so it stops the pump constantly going on and off, on and off all the time. Uh, it just smooths out the water flow, basically. So that goes next, and then we'll have another shut-off valve. Then it's going to go through a pipe past our shower, which we've already run. And then it comes out to here, and then basically all it's doing really is teeing off to the different things where we need it. So we've got our shower, which is going to have a cold water feed to it. And then we've also got a separate tank for our hot water. Um, we're not really showing on this diagram the hot water side of things, but basically the cold water needs to go into the tank first so it can then be heated up and then go through our recirculating shower, which is also not shown. And then finally it just tees off to the tap and what we've done here is we're just going to join for now the two um, parts of the tap, the hot and the cold, to the cold because obviously we don't have hot yet um, and we may not even have it in the sink anyway, we're not sure about that yet. The only other thing to make it work is obviously this pump is electronic so we just got to connect it to our fuse box and we'll put that via a little switch so we can turn off the pump if we're not going to be using it for a while. Then it should work. Turn on a tap, water comes out. <laughs> Simple, right? Supposedly. Yeah, but that's taken, uh, that's the result of uh, a lot of research to get to that point. <laughs> so the first thing we've got to do is mount our water inlet. And we're going to have that somewhere about here or mounted on a little panel. Um, obviously you could have these on the outside of your van, um, but we've decided to do it all inside because our tank is going to be inside. And the reason we've done that is because we're probably going to be traveling to quite a lot of cold countries and we didn't want any water inside to freeze or whatever so we thought it's better inside obviously it does take up a bit of space in the garage but that's what we chose perfect <laughs> So that is these two pieces done and hopefully that is all the woodworking done for this project. But so yeah, we should just be able to slot it in place now and screw it down. So 
Okay, so next job is to get our bulkhead connector into the tank and we've gone for one that has an angle just to make it easier for the tubing. So this just has a threaded part and then a nut that goes on the inside of the tank. So we basically just got to drill a hole, drop that in and then screw it up. So we've already drilled a pilot hole. Hopefully not screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Okay. Did make a bit of a mess. Plus a bit stone straight into your tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that should work. Sweet. So yeah, we just gotta clean it up now. We'll just sand the edges a little bit and uh, get rid of all these bits. Make a new cup of tea. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> so we've added our three connectors and yeah we've got the inlet pipe, the breather tube and then we just added our um, supply line here so it's going to go out to all the stuff in our van. And then the tank also has this quite nice access area which we can get in and uh, clean out if we ever needed to. Now you can get lids like this that are not fixed, they actually have holes in, so a vented lid basically does the same job as like the breather tube. But we decided not to go for that one because we thought if the tank's really full and we're driving down the road and it's like sloshing around it might spill out through there which we didn't want. So we've got the breather tube so we just got a bit of extra pipe before it gets here so hopefully it'll stop any spills coming out. And then for the pipe we've decided to use this stuff which is John Guest Speedfit pipe and this comes in a few different sizes. You can get a domestic one which is slightly larger like 15mm. Um, this is the 12mm campvan version so it is a bit more expensive the campvan one but it's also a little bit more flexible so we figured if we use this then Hopefully we can avoid having so many connectors and things to get it round all the corners in the van. And for the connectors, we've got a whole array of different pieces, so little elbows and key pieces and taps and valves and stuff like that. So to push it together, literally all you have to do is take your connector, take your pipe, and then it just pushes in there like that. And then to get it out, you just pull down the collar there and pull it out. So we should be able to connect up everything fairly quickly. And if we ever need to change it or do any maintenance, it should be pretty easy as well. So this little tap we bought just uh, screws into the port that was already pre-drilled into the tank when we bought it. We'd use PTFE tape for this, but we found this stuff we use for the shower, the Loctite 55, is actually really quite nice to work with. So I'm just going to use some of that. Okay. So hopefully this is all going to be leak free. Looks okay. Okay. Yep. So we'll just turn that. Okay. Nice. So for these ones, because this one's corrugated, we've got these double wire. Jubilee clips? I, think they're cool. I don't know what they're actually called, but yeah. <laughs> it's like some alien tentacle. <laughs> So each one of these straps was too short for them to go around the tank itself. So for each one, we've had to use two and connect them together. A bit confusing, but yeah, it's I didn't think that was going to work, but <laughs> turns out it actually does. So. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So that's it's not going anywhere. So the way we decided to get an 85 litre water tank was by trying to think of everything that we might use in the van that uses water. So to do that we made a little table. So down here we try to think of what we might use on a daily basis. So drinking, cooking, washing up, brushing teeth. And then we've got how many litres we thought we might each use per day for that thing. So for example uh, like drinking about three litres per day per person. 
and if you combine that so six per day and for a week gives you 42 and then in this table here we've got things which we don't use like every day but it's more things that we fill up so one of them is our recirculating shower refill so we've got a separate tank for that which we will be filling from our big water tank here and we're probably going to be doing that two to three times a week and the other thing is any washing that we want to do if we're in the middle of nowhere and we, we need to wash some clothes we've got one of these it's called a scrubber bag so you can just fill that up it's got a little um, sort of washboard type thing in there and you can just rinse it out and dry it in the van or outside. So that's a five litre bag, so we've got five litres there. And then for our recirculating shower tank, it is an 18 litre tank, but um, it might be that we don't need to fill it up to 18 litres, it could probably do a bit less maybe. We need to, <laughs> hello, we need to do a little bit of um, playing around and seeing how much water can go through our recirculating shower loop. You might be able to get away with less with that. So then if we add all those things up together, so the daily uses per week combined, that's 78.4. And the things like the shower refill and the clothes washing per use is 69. So if we add those together, that's our weekly usage. And on average daily, that's 21.1 litres. If we apply that to um, water tank sizes, with our 85 litre tank, we can see that that gives us about four days use. Um, and that's the worst case scenario. We think probably end up using a little bit less than all of this because this is the maximum that we think we might be able to get maybe a week out of that the other thing to consider is how much weight that you think you can get into your van because the more liters you have obviously the heavier it gets so like a 210 tank would amount to 210 kilograms um, so yeah a bit of a tricky balance with that one so that's why we've gone for this one and it also depends on what size you want as well we wanted one that would fit nicely in here but you can also get ones that go over the wheel arch and nice tall ones really low flat ones and for under the van and stuff like that obviously you have to try and change your habits a little bit living in a van as you would in the house you have to be a bit more frugal with your water usage and stuff so i think we'll just have to see how we go in the van but we think that we've chosen the right one right first bit of actual plumbing yeah Almost, down a bit, left a bit, up a bit, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just routed the pipe through our little wardrobe there. We figured this would be a nice place to mount our pump and accumulator on our wheel arch box. So it's actually going to be quite good because we carpeted this ages ago. So it'll hopefully dampen the vibrations a bit as well. It's quite nice. So yeah, the base of the pump is going to go about there. And the little filter, inline filter, just um, screws on here like that. And then the shutoff valve there. And then the accumulator next to it. You can actually put this anywhere in the pressurized side of the system, so it doesn't even have to go in line. It, you can actually shut off one part and just have it going in, but it's best if it's as close to the pump as possible, so putting it there in line is a good spot. And then it's worked out pretty good because we've got just enough space to get all those three things in there and then have the pipe going up to connect to this one, which is the one going behind the shower. Nice. And the pump we've gone for is a Trail King 7, the SureFlow one, and this one is 30 PSI pressure, so it should actually be pretty nice pressure out the taps, um, and it can deliver 7 litres a minute, which obviously in the van we're probably not going to be using it at that rate because we'll drain out the, uh, the tank pretty quickly, but it means that for the recirculating shower stuff, uh, we should have a nice shower pressure, which is nice. The other thing is that the pump and the filter are directional, so there are little arrows on there indicating the water flow, so it has to go that way. Um, we couldn't do it that way around unless our water was coming kind of like this. <laughs> um, but yeah. For us to be able to get from the pump to the accumulator, you can buy a piece which just looks like that, just joined together in the middle, but the accumulator already came with these two separately. So what we're going to do is just use one on the end there, and then use some 17 mil pipe with some Jubilee clips just to do that instead. Nice. Just save yourself 10 quid. <laughs> These wing nut ones are quite handy because you can obviously turn them without the whole thing moving around. So these plastic connections, it says just hand tighten only and no PTFE tape. So that's what we're going to do. So 
a little bit awkward, more awkward to sit on this side now, isn't there? <laughs> you to get the actual bench seats in. Yeah. It'd be really handy having this wheel arch box to sit on for the whole conversion, so it's good. Right, so to get onto these threaded ends on here, uh, we've bought these, which are uh, basically a threaded end on one side, half inch, and then just the John Guest 12mm push fit on the other side. And this is the like female version of it. For other stuff we're doing, we've also got the equivalent in the male thread. It's a bit confusing as well, there's like BSP and MPT threads. Pretty sure all of these ones are actually MPT, the American kind of pipe standard. But at half inch, they're pretty much equivalent, so everything just kind of just works, which is pretty good. And then to get the right angle at the end, because we've got to come up this way, um, we've been using these ones so far, which are a pretty good little right angle piece, but they need a bit of pipe in between to make them work. So we realised that you can actually buy similar ones um, that are like that, that already have a bit of pipe on them. So that's pretty cool, because then you don't need a bit of pipe in the middle. So we can literally just push that in there, and that connection is done. And then all we have to do is screw that on there like that, and this one just pivots around, and then we can put our pipe in there. There we go, it is free. This is the part I just don't want to do wrong, because this pipe is one continuous bit going all the way behind the shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, <Over> there. <laughs> yeah, so that's it's basically the, the one piece of pipe that we can never really get to to replace. So okay. that's why we've left it continuous, because we didn't want any joins in it, so there hopefully will be no leaks in the pipe. So after we've cut the pipe to join them all together, we're also using the little inserts you can buy with them. So they make these, and um, what these do is when you cut the pipe, there might be a few um, slightly sharper bits which can damage the seals inside here. So that extra bit of plastic just stops that. And also the other main thing it does is it makes it really nice and round and strengthens the tube. So all that together hopefully means that it won't leak it's probably more important on the hot side than the cold side because that also is changing with the temperature and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they kind of recommend that you use these. So that's what we're doing. They take quite a lot of force to get in. So I found the bed's actually been really useful for this. Just push it against that. Here we go. And I can tell you from experience, we found that once they're in, they do not come out. <laughs> so definitely don't come out. Um, but yeah, that's quite a nice solid end now. Final piece of this bit anyway. <laughs> there we awesome. go. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. It's not too bad. No. It's quite neat actually. Quite like that. We're going to leave it there for today and tomorrow we're going to carry on with the section on the other side of the shower, which is going to be a bit more awkward because it means we'll have to take out our kitchen units, which will be a bit of a pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morning obviously it is the one day recently when it's actually been raining. Yeah. Typical. Ah! Okay so that took a bit of shuffling around but we have taken out about half the kitchen so we can see try and figure out where all the pipes are going to go. So we're going to have a drain that needs to go through there for the sink and then we've got all the pipes we've got to root. Um, we're not doing the hot ones today but we will have quite a few hot pipes coming around here for all of our recycling, shower setup and hot water system. So we've got to keep that in mind. So yeah, it's going to be a bit interesting. It's quite a tight space. So I just made some tea and some thinking fuel. See what Tim's been getting on with. How's it going? Not too bad. Just been playing around with lots of different connectors. Let's see, shall we? It's quite fun actually. It's kind of like, it's like a little puzzle trying to figure it all out, like Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> that is like one of those games that you can play. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to root the water or something. I think that was a game, yeah, like Pipe Mania. I remember a game like yeah. that. It's it more connectors be. than I thought we were going to need, but <laughs> I think it worked quite well. Okay, scratch that. I had another play around. I think we've come up with a better system. So we make the hole here, and then we can do it like this to keep the pipes at the back of the cabinet, and then just tee off this way, and uh, this one just comes out like that. So I think it uses at least one less connector. And yeah. probably a bit tidier. I think that makes more sense. See, that's the power of tea. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, third iteration of this like plumbing for this bit. If we use two of the connectors together, it gives pretty much movement in all directions, which is quite good. Um, so we can put it in like that, and then we can get this nice and straight everywhere else. Yeah, so now we've just got to figure out the drain and stuff like that, and we need to drill the holes through here for these taps. So it's getting there, slowly. <laughs> So Tim and I have moved on to trying to find out where we can drill the hole for our drain. So he's currently under the van with a magnet and I'm on top with another magnet. So he's just going to put it in one place or a couple of places and uh, see how we get on. So that one is about there, which could work because our divider inside our cupboard sits around here and our sink is above it. A bit further towards the tower now. Okay. And that one is about there so that's going to be in the cupboard with our shower tank in and it being at the back I mean it could work because it'll be tucked out the way but at the same time it might be a bit annoying because it'll be directly behind the tank which will be about here so yeah yep <laughs> you better come inside then hello <laughs> Oh. Are you having some fun? I'm going to be glad and we don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm literally glad. I've only been there for like five minutes. Look at this, it's ridiculous. Pretty good, isn't it? Not bad, it's come out quite nice and neat, which is good. Yeah. Sweet. So we're going to get the waste pipe through the floor now, and we spent a little bit of time trying to decide how we were going to do the waste setup for the van, uh, because the sink we're using here is an imitation Belfast sink, so it's not actually a real one, it's made of resin and it's a lot lighter than normal. Um, and that came with normal camper van waste fittings, so that's a little camper van waste trap, and it uses the standard 28.5 mil corrugated camphor hose so with a little rubber bung on there you can just put that in the end and uh, got you a little waste pipe um, but for the rest of the van for the shower waste and for our under the van waste we're going to be using 40 mil domestic waste pipe which looks like this so we get really nice um, fast flow into the waste tank so we're trying to figure out how we can connect the camper van one to the domestic one um, and it does actually fit, if you drop in the 28.5, it will actually fit in there quite nicely, but it's kind of a drop-in fit. Um, so we were thinking we might do that, but space is actually quite limited there, and also we want it to be more of an actual join. Um, so what we discovered was, if we use the 32mm um, domestic waste pipe, and this is just push-fit stuff, turns out it's pretty much the same size outside diameter of that, so if we use the push-fit connector on there, then we can actually connect this one quite satisfyingly straight into that piece like that. And then we can drop this through the floor and then that one can connect up to our 40 mil uh, waste under the van and then this side just comes out with the camper van one. And doing it that way around means that if we ever wanted to, we could upgrade this camper van pipe to be normal domestic pipe under the sink as well. Uh, because this is slightly smaller diameter and it's corrugated on the inside as well so it might restrict the flow and food and stuff could get stuck in there um, we're going to try it out and see how it goes but yeah we've got the option of upgrading in the future if we decide we want to do that pretty good
in one of the most awkward holes. <laughs> Had a drill on the hole there. Yeah. just put a little another tank connector into our shower tank obviously we're gonna to have to put some other things drain and stuff like that and obviously the actual shower outlet we haven't done that yet so that side is the cold feed going to the shower so that's just a 12 mil john guest to half inch female bsb fitting and then on the hot side obviously we haven't done we're not doing the hot yet so just to make sure there's no drips or anything coming down there, what we've done is just hooked up a little bit of our hot pipe with a non-return valve to stop anything coming down. And then when we do connect up the hot, it will just go down like that. It's worked okay. out quite a nice, neat setup actually under there. Okay, so we've got our tap all together with all the bits and pieces on it, including the hot and cold tails and our weight system for our little <laughs> pull down thingy, whatever you call it. And just to simulate it nicely, we've just um, we're using our sample piece of the work top that we are going to get. It'll be quite a lot thinner than that, but just thought it might look nice to try. Looks good. That's what it will look like. <laughs> so just got this little Y piece, and then we've got two little connectors that will screw onto the tail of the tap slit. Getting the right connectors is one of the hardest parts of this, isn't it? Yeah. It's so confusing just yeah. to figure out. It's like dominoes. It's ridiculous. Getting the right end of each one. <laughs> I think that's on. <laughs> it's so hard to know sometimes. Okay. There we go. Oh, nice. my knees. Oh. Ow. How are you enjoying your first ever plumbing? Oh. Not really, to be honest, but as long as it makes it work, then I don't mind too much. Right, find the drain. <laughs> We're oh. getting there. <laughs> Bits and pieces of plumbing stuff everywhere. Yeah. And a whole bottle of cheese puffs. Keeping us going. <laughs> <laughs> yourself at home, Jax. <laughs> so, there we go. Just added a few clips in to hold this in place. So now the final bit of plumbing, if we've cut this the right size, should just be able to bend that around and push it in here to create a little bit of a U-bend. So that should hopefully stop any smells and stuff coming up back from the grey tank once that's installed. Obviously at the moment it's just going straight out to the floor. Um, yeah, it's actually quite neat and tidy and then hopefully there's enough space for the weight to not foul on that pipe when it comes up. That's good to me. It's all the plumbing done. Nice. Well, the cold water plumbing at least anyway. <laughs> now we've just got to actually wire in the pump so we can actually turn it on. So what we actually decided to do is to add a second fuse hub here, which conveniently will mean that anything that's on this side, so like the, all the pumps, a few more lights, um, probably internet and stuff like that, can wire in this side. And that means we don't have to run all of those wires back along the garage wall here. And then um, on the links, we've got four ports here, but we're gonna be using them all. So what we're gonna do 
is to use the bolt on the right here, which are normally for connecting another Lynx device, another Lynx distributor or something, and uh, we can just run to those. Uh, but that does mean we don't have a fuse slot there, so we just run the positive through this inline mega fuse holder, and that just comes around to our switch. So we put this switch panel on at the beginning, and uh, quite conveniently we left a spare, didn't know what we we're going to use it for, but actually it's going to work quite nice now, because we've got the left fuse hub and the right fuse hub, and then it just goes back up into the positive there. What we've done is just put it temporarily into a switch here because we haven't decided where we want the switch yet. So that last one just goes on there like that. And that's uh, basically all the electrics done. And then one more thing we realized we forgot to do is uh, we also need to pressurize our accumulator because R1 says that it comes pre-pressurized to 10 PSI. And uh, from what we've researched, that should be for us about 17 PSI to match the uh, 30 PSI rated pump pressure. <laughs> Yeah, so we can just swivel it around, and we just need to get to that valve at the top. Oh, I missed the stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take out the pressure, I've gone too far. There we go. So that now should be good pressure, so that uh, basically as the accumulator is just draining, then the pump will kick on, and it uh, should match up pretty nicely. We might need a little bit of adjustment, but that should be good enough to test it now. Okay. Take that. Hey, just think this is the first of many, hopefully, moments standing in the sunshine, filling up the water tank. Let's try at the back and give it a test. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so scared. Ready, Abby? Yeah. Oh, Hello. we have a light. We have pumping. We have water coming through this little filter. <laughs> and water coming through somewhere else, sounds like. Okay, so basically we realized that that pipe going through the divider of the sink was not pushed in all the way. Uh, we know that because we did a little test on here. And you can see that's the mark of how far this pipe actually has to go in. Which is actually quite far, but because it's so awkward under there, it's really hard to do it. So we knew what we were aiming for, so we've just really pushed it and got it in. So that's hopefully that one good. And uh, we've just tightened up this one on this uh, shower valve as well. So hopefully that's ready for test two, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. No leaks anywhere else still, that's good. Right, ready? Yeah. Okay, pump is pumping up. There we go, water has gone through. Have we got any leaks now? It looks good. <laughs> Why isn't the pump still running? Is that what it's supposed to do? Yeah, so now the pump has pressurized the entire system and the way the pump works, it's got a pressure switch inside. So anytime the pressure drops, the pressure switch will turn on the pump and then pump more water. And obviously now there should be no pressure drop because hopefully no water is leaking anywhere. As soon as we turn on any tap or anything, water will come out, the pressure will lower, and then the pump should sense that and kick back on. Ooh! Ooh, that goes. Oh, look! That's so cool. Wow! You've got running water! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is a very exciting moment. Wow! That's actually quite a huge impression as well, isn't it? It's not bad. We're going to be draining our water tank pretty quickly now. It's seven and a half litres a minute. <laughs> there you go, you can have cold showers in there now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess the, the accumulator pressure is obviously not quite right for the pump. You can see it starting and stopping. Okay, so we've been doing a bit of experimentation and playing around with the accumulator, and we think actually our pump cutting pressure is a little bit lower than we thought. So we've just lowered our accumulator down as well, and uh, now it seems to be working really good actually. That's all coming from the accumulator now. 
And that's the pump that's turning on now. Yeah, there's no change there at all, is there? Hey. Awesome, so that means we now have running water in the van, Yay. which is very, very cool, um, but it's obviously cold water. So I think in the next one, we're probably gonna be working on the hot water system so that we can actually have hot shower and stuff instead of a cold one. <laughs> See you next time. See you in the next one, bye.